Welcome to the Memorizing Tarot Cards podcast, your three-minute lessons to learn and memorize each card using symbolism. I use the writer Wait Tarot if you wish to view the card while you listen to this episode. Today, we are diving into the meaning behind the Eight of Swords. We will start with a simple breakdown of the suit and number. The second part will dig into more symbolism to help you look at this card, remember it, and tell a story. First, let's start with the suit and number. The suit of swords, represented by the sword symbol, is intrinsically linked to the element of air. This suit concerns the mind, including communication, thoughts, and decisions. It's about the intangible processes of thinking and our interactions with others through words and ideas. The number eight is often associated with abundance, power, and karma. It underscores the idea that what we invest our energy in will return to us. Putting it together, the Eight of Swords represents restrictions in our minds, not in our reality. It represents times when we believe we are stuck or powerless, but limitations are more mental than physical. Next, let's cover the symbolism on the card. The Eight of Swords shows a blindfolded and bound person. The blindfold signifies the lack of clarity or inability to see the way out. At the same time, the binding suggests a restriction that may be self-imposed. The circle of swords around the person acts as a barrier that the mind constructs, making the situation seem more daunting than it is. The often calm surroundings imply that the solution requires calmness and strategic thinking rather than panic or force. Next, let's cover the astrology associated with this card. The Eight of Swords links to Jupiter in Gemini. It emphasizes the expansion of thought and the scattering of energies that can lead to mental overload and indecision. The challenge here is to harness Jupiter's optimism and Gemini's agility to find a way out of mental restrictions. Next, let's talk about the numerology in this card. In numerology, the number eight connects with power, karma, and material progress. In the context of the swords, which deal with challenges and mental activity, the eight of swords stresses mental and internal struggles that can feel binding, but are often pathways to personal empowerment and spiritual growth. Now that we have covered the basics, symbolism, and even a bit of astrology and numerology, how do we apply this knowledge to a reading? If you look solely at this card, you would take its meaning and apply it to the meaning of the position in the spread. For example, in the present position, it may be a message that something you are worrying about may not happen at all, and that you should not concern yourself. Here's one that is a little trickier. What if this shows up in the opportunities section? How can an overthinking situation be a positive? The opportunity position can remind you not to overthink an opportunity that presents itself to you. Take the leap and pursue a situation without fear or concern. Now that we have some examples of how to read the Eight of Swords, how do we memorize it? What works best for me is to memorize the symbolism. It also helps to connect a scenario in your life to the card. For me, the Eight of Swords reminds me of teenage love, where I was in a constant state of paralysis with worry about how my romantic partner would perceive my actions. Would he like my haircut? I would check with him before I committed to plans with friends. I was afraid of messing things up because I had no experience. Seeing this card reminds me not to lose myself in worries over things that may never happen. That is my Eight of Swords story. And, of course, keep practicing taro. As you listen to these three-minute lessons, you will have consistent reminders of symbolism that apply across different cards in the deck. Thank you for listening. Join us for more three-minute lessons to memorize more cards.